the northern murky of the Mata Atlantica of Brazil, scientifically known as Bractellus hypoxanthus, the largest monkey in the Americas and one of the most peaceful primates in the world. Dubbed by many primatologists the hippie monkey for their peaceful, cooperative, non-competitive, egalitarian ways. But according to the IUCN Red List, they are also one of the world's most critically endangered primates, with less than 1,000 remaining in the wild. Join us as we learn about the tranquil life of this majestic monkey and why it is of the utmost importance to preserve their Atlantic forest habitat to ensure the future of this unique biome and the future of Brazil. It is a day like any other in Sasego Reserve in the state of Minas Gerais, Brazil. The Murakis are up early looking for fresh leaves to eat. And in this well-preserved patch of Atlantic forest, there is plenty. Murakis are herbivores, subsisting entirely from leaves, flowers, tree bark, and fruit when it is in season, from tree leaves to the leaves of vines. During Brazil's summer, which is from December through March, Temperatures are the warmest, and it is also when it receives the most rain. During this time is when the fruits are in season. Among the fruits they consume are arasa, articum, and passion fruit, which grows on vines in the understory of the jungle. Although providing a habitat for such a large monkey, Sasego Reserve is rather small, at 134 hectares which is only 330 acres of land. However, if the buffer zone is included, it comes out to about 800 hectares, which is 2,000 acres. This area was once part of a larger, once extensive Atlantic forest of Brazil, principally known as the Mata Atlantica. However, due to the onslaught of growing cow pastures and coffee plantations and other agriculture, the forest has dramatically shrunk and become highly fragmented. The truth is, this entire area was once an all dark green, which represents forest, but today, this is far from the case. Luckily in the area of Sasego, this small corner has remained relatively undisturbed and is considered primary forest. Of the Murakis remaining in Sasego, there are currently 28 individuals. Before the yellow fever outbreak, which happened six years prior, there were 38 individuals. The virus had a devastating impact on many murky populations, but today they are slowly recovering. Sasego Reserve is essentially a standalone ecological island. The closest reserve with murkies, Feliciano Miguel Abdala, is about 50 kilometers away. Being that this population is completely cut off from other reserves, with such a small group, the threat of genetic stagnation, in other words, inbreeding, is a serious concern. Genetic diversity is a necessity for strong, resilient genes. Without it, the murky becomes more susceptible to disease and birth defects. However, conservationists are taking measures to correct this by taking females from the independent groups, as well as lone orphans, and introducing them into other reserves. Such is the case with Eduarda, an orphan female Mordecai we see here with the collar. She was moved to Sasego in 2007, and it was a success. She was quickly accepted by the group, having her first baby in 2008. Since then, she has had an impressive seven children. She was fitted with the collar when she was transferred, which was used to monitor her and track the movements of the group. In the wild, Murakis can have a lifespan of over 40 years. Here we see her with her youngest child. Male murakis do not reach sexual maturity until they are 4 to 8 years old, while it takes females between 5 to 11 years to reach maturity. On average, females bear their first offspring at 7 years of age.
Below the Sierra del Mantiqueira mountain range, in the Rio Grande resides the territory of the Southern Murky. It is the crack of dawn in Carlos Botello State Park in the state of Sao Paulo. The Murakis are already starting to awake and search for leaves. Mata Lanchica parks like Carlos Botello, Sasego, Felicio Miguel Abdallah, and others are increasingly becoming popular among Brazilians and international tourists alike who are fascinated by the unique tranquil behavior of the majestic Muriqui monkey, the largest primate in the Western Hemisphere. Here resides the largest of any murky population at around 1,200 individuals. Carlos Botello State Park has a significantly larger area to accommodate them at over 37,000 hectares. Other than being slightly larger than their northern cousins, the two main differences are, one, they lack an opposable thumb, while northern murkies actually have a small opposable thumb called a vestigial thumb, and two, Southern murkies always have dark faces, while northern murkies, from time to time, but not always, have blotchy pigmented faces that can become lighter as they age. As soon as they are up, some of the murkies are already starting to take a mid-morning nap. Murkies are as mellow and easygoing as it gets. Back in Sasego, a northern murky stands up on the branches to scan the area looking for its family. As the largest New World monkey, the Mordeki stands at 4.3 feet, or 1.3 meters tall. For the Mordeki, the forest is their playground, and high up in the canopy, it is truly their domain. This life in the trees has earned them exceptional strength, which they are constantly using by jumping, swinging, and climbing. Weighing in at about 15 to 22 pounds, or 7 to 10 kilograms, they use their strength and their weight to sway trees back and forth to get closer to the next tree, launching them for their jump. As we zoom out, it becomes apparent these Mordekis are using this exceptionally tall palm as a shortcut to get to higher altitudes of the mountain forest slope. The forest of Sasego truly is their playground, the world of the Mordekis. North of Sasego, in Feliciano Miguel Abdullah Reserve, seeds begin to fall to the forest floor. It seems the Moriki have discovered a new fruit source, even in the Mata Lanchica winter. The Moriki, along with most primates, are essential seed dispersers for the forest. By eating fruits, then dropping them, spitting them out, or pooping the remains later in a different area of the forest, they ensure a more even diversity of tree species, which they help spread out to wider areas over time. All the while fertilizing the area. They play an essential role in the Atlantic forest ecosystem. Even when they eat leaves, you could think of them as the official gardeners of the canopy. But just as much as they are architects of the forest above, they are architects of the forest below. Because by thinning out the tree crowns, more light is able to penetrate the lower canopy and ultimately the ground below, allowing for more plant growth.
Their strong prehensile tail is always in use, standing on end or wrapped around a tree. Most often used to grip branches from above as they hang in the air, selecting the freshest leaves and fruit. This muscular tail is strong enough to support their entire body weight. It's also used to stabilize their body when perched in precarious positions high in the canopy. This grip is secured by a rubbery patch of tough skin on the underside of their tail. That tail is just so functional, you know? Oh, yeah. Two Mordekis take solace in the branches at midday. One affectionately grabs the arm of the other, a communication signifying a family bond. The Mordekai are known as perhaps the most peaceful primates in the world, an egalitarian society where everyone shares the food. Where there is no leader or dominant male controlling a harem of females, no regular battles for supremacy, everyone gets a turn. Even mild disputes among adult males are often resolved with a hug. Although it is very rare, occasionally disputes might break out between different groups. Sometimes it is males protecting their females from outside groups of males. Other times it is females attempting to chase out a new female trying to enter the group. In areas where there are multiple groups, it is usually the female who leaves when she is of age to mate and joins a new group. This is how genetic diversity is traditionally maintained among the murky. It looks like the Mordekis have spotted the cameraman. So they pull down an overhead branch for some midday privacy. Back in Sasego, a warm hug between mother and child starts the day. Another mother hugs her baby close. The culture of love and affection starts early and lasts a lifetime. But this young monkey in its early adolescence has other plans. Young murakis exude boundless energy. Not far off, a capuchin monkey forages in a tree lower to the ground. Due to the significant size difference, the capuchin tends to stay out of the Moriki's way. There is enough food for everyone in the forest. Socially, the northern Moriki is quite playful, especially children and adolescents. Although adult Mordekai are typically quite tranquil, adolescent Mordekis, well, their exceptional levels of energy are a different story. Quickly, play turns to roughhousing as Eduarda tries to break it up between her two children. Mutual grooming of one another's fur is another common social activity that strengthens the bond among the group. But even that turns into play. Nature's public water fountain, at least for the canopy of the rainforest. The rosette of concave leaves of the bromeliad perfectly captures the water from rain and passing clouds. From drinking from bromeliads, To drinking out of tree wells, Mordekis manage to stay hydrated. The excess moisture from all the plants they consume helps as well. As the principal gardeners of the canopy, by eating the leaves of vines, they ensure that the leaves of the vines do not overtake and suffocate the crowns of emerging and established trees. The Muriki only takes its share. Their role in the forest cannot be understated.
A loud screech, followed by what sounds like the neighing of a horse, breaks the calm of the afternoon. A yelp is usually a sign of alert. A rival group or perhaps a predator like an ocelot or a puma. The neighs are often used to alert the group is on the move. But this murky doesn't seem to be concerned. It rather enjoy its comfortable resting spot. The Atlantic forests of Brazil, principally known as the Mata Atlantica, are not only home to the Mordeki, but also the majority of Brazilians. This forest, which stretches along the coastal mountains, is the most deforested major tropical forest in the world. At one point, it was the largest coastal rainforest in the world, but today it no longer holds that distinction. Everything you see within the thick yellow lines was once green, unbroken forests, but now most of it is gone, between 7 to 18 percent remain replaced with crops, cows, and city. About 60% of Brazil's population now lives in this region. Even Sao Paulo, now one of the largest cities in the world, was once part of the continuous forest that stretched as far as the eye could see, but the current reality for Brazil is much different. However, to ensure Brazil's future water security, the Atlantic forest is more important than ever. A significant portion of the rain that falls in the southern Mata Atlantica region is stored in the forests of Amazonia. This atmospheric river passes through the Pantanal and rains down in places such as Sao Paulo. The other portion of rain comes from the Atlantic Ocean. The convergence of these two forces create the majority of rain in this region. But with growing deforestation in southern Amazonia, an unpredictable climate due to rising global temperatures makes this rain less and less reliable. As a result, multiple serious droughts have occurred in Sao Paulo and the surrounding areas in the last decade. The mountains of the Mata Atlantica help intercept much of the precipitation as the passing air cools and condenses to follows rain. But sufficient forest is necessary to capture this water, storing it in the leaves and branches. A dense, complex, multi-layered, tropical rainforest stores more fresh water than any ecosystem on Earth. And their root systems also help facilitate the percolation of rainwater in the ground, recharging the underground aquifers. As this water flows through the rainforest ecosystem, they act as natural filters purifying the drinking water from sediments and pollutants in our skies. Healthy natural forests also prevent soil erosion and reduce the risk of flash floods something that in recent years has impacted the mountains of Minas Gerais. By expanding and connecting reserves, increasing native vegetation throughout, and reforesting idle land, this creates a strong Mata Atlantica ecosystem that ensures a better chance of a self-sustaining water cycle in these uncertain times of a changing climate. The Atlantic forest region is also a jewel of biodiversity. Of the over 23,000 species of plants, 40% are endemic. Over 60% of the animals are endemic to this region, found nowhere else. 52% of the trees are endemic. And up to 92% of the amphibians are found nowhere else. And the Mordekis, who are the essential gardeners of this unique ecosystem, are only found in this region. As the forest shrinks, their numbers have declined dramatically, which is why it is more important than ever to protect what is left and to reforest the areas we can. We can start by planting trees and if possible, visiting this ecosystem to learn more about the majestic Mordeki, the future of Brazil's Mata Atlantica. <laughs>